Trey Young and the Hawks had the third worst <laughs> record in the whole entire league, yet I love watching them play. Trey Young dropped a career high 50 points. Again, five zero points on the Miami Heat in a win over the Heat. The fourth youngest player in NBA history to score 50 points. Jalen Rose, what do you think about Trey Young? I want to make sure I give their coaching staff and organization a lot of credit for allowing Trey Young to continue to flourish and having the courage of their convictions to actually trade Luka Doncic and acquire him along with another draft pick who also scored plus 20 points in the game yesterday and played really well. Here's what I want to say. When you watch the Atlanta Hawks play, you notice when Trey Young looks down and he sees any part of the logo at the top of the floor, <laughs> he knows that he can raise up. The Atlanta Hawks practice him shooting four-point shots in practice so that mm -hmm. they can open up the floor and create a level of space and that allows him to get downhill. So he's just raising up. People are in a defensive stance and they're trying to be poised for what play they're about to run. And then he just raises up. And that was against the Miami Heat, one of the tougher defensive teams in the entire NBA. They don't usually give up performances like this. Trey Young mm. has been outstanding this season. He really has. And Jalen, you brought up something that only someone who played in the NBA a long time can really see, because I see this in the body language of defenders as well. They're kind of seeing what play is being called and seeing where the screen is coming from. They're not expecting him to pull up and shoot. And he just does it. Like early in the shot clock, if he catches you slipping just for one second, he will pull up and shoot. And Jalen, you know that we all, we both watch a lot of NBA basketball and don't pay too much attention to the numbers, but I want you to take a look at what Trey Young has done in his very early in his career when you look at the scoring clip that he has been on in his first two seasons. Jalen, what do these numbers tell you? Well, these numbers tell me that this guy's gonna go on to be a perennial all-star and a terrific performer for the Atlanta Hawks and a, and a franchise player. You know, I don't use that term too very often, but he has the goods, Jacoby. He has the personality. He's really inclusive with his teammates, trying to get other yep. people involved. And again, he has unlimited range. And so now all of a sudden, you have a weapon that can do some things that Steph Curry was able to do when the Golden State Warriors were winning championships. And when you make your first all-star team the way Trey Young did, and there were some people that was like, oh, he's on a losing team, but yet he's still going to be on the team. You gain a level of confidence. He was in the locker room, Jacoby. He was looking around. There's LeBron. There's Kawhi. There's Anthony Davis. Okay, there's the Greek freak, James Hart. I belong with these guys. So now all of a sudden he get back with the Atlanta Hawks, and he puts on the show at home versus the Miami Heat. Well, I absolutely love Trey Young, and I just, I just, I love watching this Hawks team so much. I get concerned that Trey Young might end up in the Devin Booker type of situation where he is so excellent, but the franchise and the people around him don't match his excellence. Moving on to another great game last night. This one had me up late because I'm watching the Nets and the Sixers. The Sixers never lose at home. The Nets should have won this game in regulation. It ended up going into overtime. Joel Embiid had 39 points, 16 rebounds, and after the game, he called himself the best player on the planet. Jalen Rose, what do you think about this game and Joel Embiid's claim? So, let, 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 let me get this right. You mean Joel Embiid? extremely talented center who played well for the Sixers after they were trailing against the Nets. Nets actually complimented himself. Yes. He said he was one of the best players in the game. Oh, no, no he would not do such a thing. <laughs> no, he would not do such a thing. And here, here's the dilemma for the 76ers. They were playing without Ben Simmons. Is yep. that they seem to perform better without Al Horford. When you sign somebody in the offseason to a $100 million contract, you anticipate that he's going to be out there playing quality minutes like mm -hmm. Tobias Harris. But now all of a sudden, you realize in an era of small ball and Joel Embiid needing opportunities and space on the post that Al Horford isn't a knockdown shooter. He isn't a guy that's going to get you shots off the dribble. So now all of a sudden, it's better for the team if they play large quality minutes without him being on the floor. That's something to monitor going forward.
Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports analysis and highlights, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.